A few months ago, one of the executives in our department left on very short notice, which, uh, needless to say, really put our department on the spot as there was no one to uh, replace him. The day he left, the vice president of our department, who is my boss, called me in and told me he was going to try and divide up the work amongst uh, a couple of the pe people in the department. The two people he had already spoken to did not want the uh, additional responsibility. They, uh, they didn't exactly turn him down flat, but they told him that they were very busy as it was and they didn't exactly volunteer. So he asked me if I wanted to handle some of the overload. Well, I've always made it a policy of mine to never turn down anything that looked like an opportunity. And that's what this looked like to me. So I said, yeah, I'll take the whole job. He looked pretty surprised, but I think he was uh, pleasantly surprised. After he left uh, my office, I got together with my secretary and we did some uh, work on my incoming and outgoing phone calls where all the incoming calls were taken in the morning and the outgoing calls were taken in the evening. And my secretary also took on a lot more responsibility and a lot more of the chores herself which she was uh, very, very happy to do. And after about two weeks of this, my secretary and I were handling twice the calls, twice the meetings, about half again as many personal conferences, and the work week actually seemed to go a lot faster. Last week, the boss called me in again, told me the uh, board was very happy with the work that we've been doing and uh, offered me a new job, make the job permanent with a new title and a raise to go along with it. So I guess that shows you that necessity is not only the mother of invention, it's the mother of opportunity as well. I wanted you to hear that man's story because it illustrates one of the best ways I know to stimulate creative thinking. In one word, capacity. In any endeavor you choose to pursue, the success formula is first, do what you do better, and second, do more of it. Improve both the quality and the quantity of your output. That second part means increasing your capacity. Remember our analysis of time excusitis? This is where you can put that cure to work. There is a two-step procedure that can show you how. First, always eagerly accept the opportunity to do more. It's a compliment to be asked to take on new responsibility. Accepting greater responsibility on the job makes you stand out. It shows you're more valuable. Now the second step is this. Concentrate on how can I do more. Ask that question and creative answers are certain to come. Now some of these answers may be better planning and organization of your present work or taking intelligent shortcuts in your routine activities or possibly dropping some non-essential activities altogether. But again, the solutions for doing more will appear when you ask the question, how can I do more? Earlier, I cited an old business axiom. If you want something done, give it to a busy person. I personally refuse to work on any project with someone who has plenty of time. The lesson I've learned from painful experience over the years is that the person with plenty of time generally wants to keep it that way. He's more interested in avoiding responsibility than he is in increasing his output. All successful, competent people are busy. All the successful businesses I know are busy. These businesses constantly ask themselves, how can they increase their output? Now, why not ask yourself the same question? How can you increase your output? Capacity is one tool for success. Another is the skill of listening. In any organization, whether it's government or business or the arts or any other endeavor, listening becomes more important and more prevalent the higher you go up the executive ladder. The more responsible the position, the more likely the person holding it is to be a good listener. You will never find an executive in any healthy organization buttonholing someone in the hall and running down all their problems to them. That's the tactic of a mediocre person, the one who's envious of the power and success of others. If you have a conversation with a high-level executive at work, you'll probably find that the executive encourages you to do most of the talking, while he or she does most of the listening. That's the mark of a leader. Success-minded people tend to monopolize the listening, while small-minded people tend to monopolize the talking. The reason for this is that a leader in any field is a kind of human decision-making machine. And for that machine to work, it has to have raw materials. And the raw materials for making decisions are the ideas and opinions of other people, in addition to one's own. Other people won't provide answers and solutions, but they will provide the grist for the leader's creative mill. 
So if you walk into a top-level meeting in General Motors or the White House or the local school board, you'll most likely find that the person in charge is listening to what others have to say. That person knows that listening is what will give them the information they need to make tough, important decisions. To develop your own listening skills, try this procedure. First, encourage others to talk. In personal conversations or in group meetings, draw out other people with phrases like, tell me about your experience, or what do you think should be done about this, or what do you feel is the key point here. This will give you two important benefits. Your mind soaks up raw material that you can then use to produce creative thought, and you'll also win the friendship and the respect of others. Next, test your own views in the form of questions. Let other people help you smooth and polish your ideas. Use the, what do you think of this? suggestion approach. But don't be dogmatic. Don't announce a fresh idea as if it were handed down to you on a golden tablet. Do a little information research first. See how your associates react to the idea. If you do this, chances are you'll end up with a better idea. Finally, concentrate on what the other person says. Listening is more than just keeping your mouth shut. Listening means letting what's said really penetrate your mind. So often, people pretend to listen when they're really not listening at all. They're just waiting for the other person to pause so they can take over the talking. Concentrate on what the other person says. Evaluate it. That's how you collect mind food. This is who, my mother was a Sunday school teacher. What you want me to be? What? My mother was a Sunday school teacher. She taught church Sunday school. That's what I was raised in. What, what else I'm gonna be? What? But I have to come in places that are different and let you be who you are. Because I am not right and you are wrong. You are right. You are 1,000% correct in Islam. Islam is 1,000% correct. It's your faith. How can I say it different? My faith works for me. It is for me. It is in my heart. It works for me. My God has to judge me for me. Your Highness told me yesterday, he said, he do, I can't repeat everything because it's very private, but he's such a, such a brilliant man. He understood. He said, man, there is a heaven, there is a hell. How you get there, that's up to you. I just want to go to heaven. I don't, my life, I had enough hell. I don't want no more. I just want to go see heaven. I don't, what it is, is I'm assuming some of us is going. I'm assuming some of us ain't. You just have to decide. I just, I, I'm, I'm thinking about going now. Now the room kind of got a little tight on this subject right here. So we're going to move past this. I was just telling you who I am. That's who I am. If you can accept that about me, I can accept it about you. Huh? And uh, yesterday, my man Jay, he bought a uh, tailor to my room. And uh, I got, how many did I make, Jay? Four? I made, they making eight caftans for me. So tomorrow, it's caftans? Eight, he made, they made eight of them for me. So tomorrow, I'm going to have on my caftan tomorrow. I'm going to be rocking the caftan when you see me tomorrow. Yeah. I haven't quite figured this out yet. I don't know. I've been trying to work that out. I'm a, Cause a lot of y'all like the way y'all do it. Like the dude right there, he got he is cocked up on one side. I like that. Then the other dude, he got hit in one dude head. He is pulled over. I said, Ooh. so I gotta see. I gotta figure my style out, you know. But I have my cap there tomorrow. I'm gonna have it later today, so I'm gonna be nice. I think Steve's gonna start some fashion trends in the UAE tomorrow. Uh, Steve. Yeah, I kind of messed up though because. I was trying to get some more stuff put on it, you know, some embroidery, and he told me, you, you cannot do it. I wanted to put some, you know, some designs on it. He told me I can't do that, so I'm going to have to. I got one white one, but I got a lot of other colors. Just wanted to try something other than white. I just, y'all see me, I'm going to have on a blue one. I got green, yellow, gold, blue. Oh, yeah, 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 don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. This Steve Harvey, I'm a star. Don't worry about that. I'm going to look different. <laughs> Everybody going, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Somebody got to do it. Steve, you are a star. Now the success has continued. It doesn't seem like you're going to stop anytime soon, to be honest. So is it fair to say you can never be too successful? Is that a fair statement? When does it stop? When is it OK to stop? Well, that's up to the individual. I think in my line of work, 
If I retire, what do I do? What? A lot of people retire and they just wither away. They dry up. They sit. I've seen old people retire and they just start folding up. They stop going to work. They stop living. I don't know that I can do that because I'm different now. I'm, I'm, I'm a, a motivational speaker. I travel. I'm taking my foundation to Africa. I'm, I don't. If I stop doing that, what I'm gonna do? You know, I I was talking to my sons one day. One of my sons is here. And I was telling him, I said, one day I'm gonna stop working. You're gonna take over. I'm gonna be on a yacht out in the middle of the ocean. I want you to send my money to me out on my yacht. He said, okay, dad, I'm gonna send you your money. Then I got to looking at him. I said, he probably ain't gonna send me all of it. So I probably need to keep working. Would not you make it by Friday? But suppose I told you how you can become a millionaire with what you have. I got my daughter who's a senior at Michigan State counting on me and she don't know what a loan is. She don't know what FAFSA is. I got my mama who retired counting on me. There's nothing worse than being stupid. And if you will read the books, learn from your experiences, do all the things that you possibly can to get the information, you continue to fight on no matter the circumstances. 
Tired as you are as many mistakes as you, may you do make a difference there is. Something they would lose if you were not there, there was something that they would miss if you were not there you do. Make a difference. We all have things that we're believing for, dreams that we want to accomplish, problems we're hoping will turn around. Maybe it's to see our family restored, to lose some weight, to break an addiction, to start our own business. Because here's the deal. All of you have everything it takes to become rich. You just don't believe it. Now, if you can develop this theory that I'm about to share with you, I have the way for you to be rich. This is it. First of all, all of you have a gift. God gave it to you when he created you. God never created a single soul without giving them a gift. That's the God that created you. He's a very smart God. Here the cold thing. When he made you, he put the gift inside of you. He didn't hide it under the ocean. It ain't on the mountain nowhere. It ain't under no rocks. You ain't got to go drilling. God put what you needed inside of you at birth. All of you have a gift. That's where they go in relationship. That's why they start to tear it down. That's why the relationship starts to break down because people get scared when it isn't working out and then they make it worse than it is so they don't have to try. Because they don't want to try again and be disappointed. They don't want to feel that sense of rejection. They don't want to feel that sense of failure. So most people make it much worse than it is. People tell me all the time, oh, I'm skeptical or I'm pessimistic. I said, no, 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 you're gutless. It takes no guts. It takes no courage to be a pessimist to say it's not going to work, to try to find out what's wrong. What's wrong is always available. So what's right. So I'm not into positive thinking, but I am into intelligence. And intelligence says, see it as it is. Don't make it worse than it is. You must immediately clarify what has to be changed. Whenever you have what you used to call a negative emotion, you're now going to call an action signal. You know that that action signal is signaling you need to change one of two things. Either your perception or your procedure. But you have got to do your gift. The thing God gave you at birth to do. It is the thing that you do the absolute best with the least amount of effort. That's your gift. Anything else you're doing, you're wasting your time. Do you hear me? You wasting your time. If when the alarm clock goes off in the morning and it makes you sick every morning that that alarm go off, it's because you ain't doing your gift. You're going against what God created you to be. Do, do most of you know what your gift is? Who in here doesn't know their gift yet? Okay, let me tell you what you do. Go home today. Don't talk to nobody. Sit down and have one conversation with yourself. What is the thing that I do the absolute best with the least amount of effort? This ain't gonna take you long. You old enough, you grown. Write it down. I don't care if it's networking. And let me clarify what I mean by that. Your perception might be, for example, that gosh, you feel hurt. You feel like your husband doesn't love you so much anymore. Your wife doesn't love you so much anymore because gosh, when you first met, boy, all you had to do was you know, look at them and they drop their newspaper and came over and hugged you. Now they don't. You have a sense of loss and that hurts you inside. And that hurt is a lot more painful than the feelings of just being uncomfortable. The point, though, is this. Is this an appropriate emotion for you to feel based on this situation and this time with this person? That's really the question we want to ask ourselves whenever we have an emotion. We know that we have that signal. We need to first identify it and then secondly, immediately appreciate this signal is offering us a message. And the message is we need to change. Again, our perception or our procedure. So our perception might be, person doesn't love me. Do we need to change our perception? Do we have some rules that are inappropriate in this situation? And the answer here probably is yes. Wouldn't you agree? This person is just wrapped up in what they're doing because they're just immersed. It doesn't mean they love you any less. Sometimes as it goes on month after month, even year after year, we don't see anything changing. It's easy to get discouraged and think it's never going to happen. This is as good as it gets. I'll just learn to live with it. We all go through disappointments, setbacks, loss, pain is a part of life. It's easy to get discouraged, even bitter. Think, why is this happening to me? Sometimes we look at pieces in our lives that don't make sense. The key is what we do in our times of pain. Pain will change us. Heartache, loss, disappointments, they don't leave us the same every painful time. Even though you don't like it. I can't be replaced. Some of y'all acting like <laughs> you acting like you indispensable. You acting like if something happened to you, they're going to wait around for the next two, three years. Like your spot is just guaranteed. Talk to me, why can't you be replaced? I got one, give me one more. 
Why can't you do you? Maybe you don't even know why you can't be replaced. Do you know why you can't be replaced? Anybody? Don't let me call on you. Come on, talk to me. Why can't you be replaced? I got time. Coach, I asked him how much time I had before I came in. He told me what I had. We got a little bit more. I can sit here and wait the whole time if you want me to. But I need somebody to tell me why you can't be replaced. Oh, you, you good. You know, I feel, I feel you, bro. You good. I need somebody else. You already, we Yo, good. You fought your whole life to get to this point. Just to let it slip away. Sure enough, you'll be wiser this year than you were last year. And I've got a few techniques that I teach in my seminar on how to get smarter keeping a journal, going to the lectures, going to the seminars, listening to the sermons, picking up ideas from other people. You just must keep up this steady process of learning. Never cease your quest for knowledge. And that's one of the key points to go from average to fortune. Get smart. This is called the possibility for life change starts with education. Don't be lazy in learning. Don't be lazy in picking up the ideas. Don't be lazy in learning from your own experience. Learning is the beginning of wealth. Learning is the beginning of life change. Some people want to start with motivation, but you don't start with motivation. Somebody says, just motivate this guy, he'll be all right. The answer is no, probably not. It's developing something in you that can only be developed in the tough times. Eventually, that will pass, you will get through it, but you will be different. In those tough times when you're uncomfortable, going through a loss, dealing with an illness you could easily let it overwhelm you. Now how the pain changes you is up to you. You can come out bitter, or you can come out better. You can come out defeated giving up on your dreams, or you can come out with a new passion and new fire excited about the new opportunities in front of you. I may not like it, but I'm not a whiner. I'm a warrior. I know I can handle this. Did you hear what he just said? That's another player. That's why I'm saying, say it because I don't play football. So, say it one more time. You fought your whole life to get to this moment just to let it slip away. You know what's crazy, bro? I've been doing this for a long time. I used to think in my mind, like when I used to go and speak for teams, I used to think in my mind, like, yo, y'all finally there, right? Like, yo, like bros in here, like scrapping and people getting up early and people eating right, like, and people ain't on social media and people ain't smoking and people ain't drinking. Like, I was so stupid when I first started doing this. I thought everybody that came to the league was about that life. I just thought everybody was like getting up first thing in the morning, hitting the weights, eating right. I thought everybody came out like, let's go. And then I realized, yo, some dudes got here. This was their whole dream to get to the league. And they got to the league and they ain't got no more dream. You finally got to where you've been trying to get to your whole life. And you were sweeter in high school in terms of the grind. You worked harder in college than you do in the NFL. It blew my mind. You here. If a guy's an idiot, you motivate him. Now you got a motivated idiot. So education, get smart. Don't miss the training class. You say, well, I've already been to one of those classes. I've already heard it. Got a good phrase for you to take home. That's no sign you got it. Just because you've listened to those millionaire tapes one time is no sign you've got it. I'm asking you to listen to them over and over and over. I'm asking you to dedicate yourself to a new level of learning. You know, study, learn, grow, change, develop. Never let it be said you didn't learn. Right? If you want to solve your problems, you got to learn. If you want to take advantage of an opportunity, you got to learn. Develop your own personal philosophy here. Philosophy, major determining factor in how your life works out. Each person's philosophy is like the set of the sail. The same wind blows on us all. The difference in where we arrive at the end of the week, at the end of the month, at the end of the year is not the wind that blows. Don't complain about the pain without the pain. We couldn't reach the fullness of our destinies. Sometimes we bring pain on ourselves, we make poor choices, get in a relationship we know is not good, or maybe get over our head in our spending. Now it's painful, we're having to deal with the consequences. All of us experience pain, my challenge. Don't just go through it, grow through it. That difficulty is an opportunity to get stronger, to develop character, to gain new confidence. Have you ever found yourself stuck in one of life's storms? And no matter how hard you try, no matter what you do, it seems that you can't make any headway. So many times the storms in our life, we didn't prepare for them, we didn't plan for them, we didn't ask for them, we didn't even cause them, they just suddenly happen. 
I still believe that things can turn around for me. I still believe that this is not my final position. I still believe that my family can get better. I still believe that if I lose this job, there is another job for me. I still believe that my marriage is not over. Turn to your neighbor and say, you got to keep your hope. Sometimes you have to go through something to really get your insight, to find out who you really are, to find out what you really got, to find out that you're tougher than you thought you were, to find out that you can do more than you thought you could do. Through my eyesight, I connect with that which is around me, not that which is within me. If I look around me, I see circumstances. If I look in me, I see hope. So sometimes in order to really get your focus, you have to shut down your eyesight to build up your insight. Shut your eyes to what you see and turn on your insight to what you believe. You can't help victims when you see yourself as a victim. You have to announce your recovery to yourself. You've got to command yourself, get up out of this hospital bed and start to move it. Clarity. Because when you get in a storm, you become real clear of what matters and what does not. When you get in a storm, you're not trying to say, oh my God, let me get my Gucci bag. No, no, no. When you're in a storm, you get clarity as to what matters. Your priorities come into view when you're in a storm. As a man thinketh in his heart. When you talk to yourself, that's your heart. That's the meeting place where you are reasoning with yourself. That's where you sit down and say, well, let's see now. Can I do this? Can I not do it? Can I really do this? That's where you have a meeting with yourself. That's a powerful thing to understand because you weren't born this way. You weren't born doubting. You were born perfect. You were born believing you were going to do something great. You were born happy. You were born believing you were going to do something special with your life. As a baby, I promise you, you had no negative self-talk. You had no negative self-doubt. These are external sources. So important to know because those thoughts aren't really who you are. Be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. People say, well, I was just thinking it. Well, you don't realize how important the thought is. The power of your mind, the power of your thoughts has tremendous ability to shape your life for good or for bad. Sometimes when we compare ourselves to others, we put ourselves down so much that we don't find power to invest in ourselves. And if you accept the thought, Growing up, somebody said to you, you're worthless, you're no good, you don't matter, you're ugly, you're uncoordinated. If you accepted that fact, whether it was right or wrong, it shaped your life. And you're back to the same place that you were. And you wonder why you're not being successful. It's easier downhill than it is uphill. It's quicker downhill than it is uphill. And so what happens is, we have a lot of good uphill days, but we have a few downhill days, and the few downhill days cancel out all the uphill days. I think so many people out there think that they're cursed, or that they've got bad luck, or that they're detri like their life is detrimental, when really it's all a perspective shift. So I want you guys tonight to take some time today and I want you to think about things that you've experienced in life that you thought were curses that were really life's workings for you. Managing my mind is actually the key to peace and the key to happiness. An unmanaged mind leads to tension. A managed mind leads to tranquility. An unmanaged mind leads to conflict. A managed mind leads to confidence. You can't go uphill without self-discipline. Nobody will carry you uphill. Nobody can coach you uphill. If you go uphill, you gotta do it yourself.
There are no free rides uphill. There's no such thing as accidental achievements. An unmanaged mind leads to stress. If you don't manage your thoughts, you just let them go all over the place. You don't ever even try to control your mind and the way you direct your thoughts. You're going to have an enormous amount of stress in your life. But a managed mind leads to strength and leads to security and leads to serenity. And that's how you should dream. You should dream outlandish dreams. If it's in your imagination, it's possible. Do you know that you can't think of something that can't happen? You know it's impossible to think of the impossible. It's not possible. So if you think it, it's possible. And if you live your life in possibilities instead of probabilities, you have a greater chance of finding happiness. There's things in your life that are necessary, but they're unpleasant. Working out my legs is necessary, but it's unpleasant. Why is it necessary? Because it's the largest muscles in your body. See, what you learn is it's this thing called unintended consequences. You don't know what type of fight you gotta face on Tuesday. You don't know what your boss is gonna come and say on Friday. But thank God you've been putting in some work on the interior life that when you need to fight, you got some strength. I'm the kind of person, if I'm gonna do it, I'm all in. I'm the kind of person, I don't like being in between. I don't like to be at the back of the line. I wanna be in the front of the line and I'm going to prepare myself and work on myself to be a dominant voice. Take no prisoners and like Mike Tyson, eat the wounded, starting at the ears. Carefully consider how you live. So live wisely, not foolishly. Make the most of your time because these are difficult, evil days. You, you need to have a routine. Now, when you're stuck at home, it's so easy to slip into sloppiness. I want you to write this down right now, okay? Write this down. Routine develops resilience. I've been riddled with self-doubt. That creeps up all the time in our lives. Am I enough? Am I good enough? Do I deserve this? These are two of the most chaotic things that the adversary can do to us or that we do to ourselves in our own minds is to get ourselves doubting, to get ourselves discouraged because you can't win when you doubt and you can't win when you're discouraged. So if you can't control something and you can't get control of it, you have to at least embrace what you can. There's only so much you can do and you cannot completely eliminate it, but you can't control it. So why are you going to worry about it? Why are you going to stress about it? If there's something that's completely beyond your control, you've got to detach from it and not let yourself get stressed about it. Dreams without goals remain dreams just dreams and ultimately fuel disappointment dreams without goals yearly goals life goals daily goals monthly goals hourly goals goals on the road to achievement cannot be achieved without discipline and consistency you understand Someone's gonna get the candy in life. There's always candy in life. That pinata eventually always breaks down. Do you wanna be the person who was there in the beginning hitting as hard as you could and sacrifice it and never get the candy? Or are you gonna get something for your pain? Or are you gonna get something for your effort? Or are you gonna get something for this sacrifice you're making? You gotta get something for this pain. You gotta stick in the game until the candy comes out and then we all get to celebrate. I promise you there's gonna be a payoff for you. The big challenge is to make something out of each opportunity. Now, if winters are always going to occur in our life, shouldn't we benefit from them too? Come the next winter, you could be on the inside looking out, seated by a warm fire, the company of a good friend, and those unique feelings of security in spite of the circumstances or the season.
Happiness is freedom from the negative children of fear, such as worry, low self-esteem, envy, greed, anger, resentment, and so on. Happiness is an awareness and a grasp of the positive power of life and loving values. It is an order of thought, activity, and lifestyle. Happiness is values in balance. It is contact with people of substance. There's another dimension, which is trait conscientiousness, which is integrity and, and, uh, and dutifulness, um, orderliness, industriousness, openness, which is like a hybrid between intellect, intelligence roughly, and creativity. And so you can go there and find out how you compare to other people. And that's kind of interesting and useful because it's kind of useful to know who you are. And to, to know that that's actually who you are, you know, that, that you have a nature. If you've had a dream, I guarantee you, you were born with that dream woven into your DNA. You see, dreams are deeply personal. That's why you can be super little and be drawn to something like being a lawyer and have no explanation for why. And this is important for you to understand because if you give up on your dreams, your dream's going to haunt you. You have to be honest with yourself and truthful with yourself. And I think a lot of times what it is, is for me, I was expecting things from people that I wasn't giving to people. And so that's very selfish, you know? So I had to look at myself and say, you know what? This part of my personality needs to be changed. It needs to be fixed. So it's that reality that you have to have with yourself and that, that truthfulness and not knowing that it doesn't make you weak by admitting these things. It doesn't make you less by admitting these things. Begin to know now that the night will pass, and as you learn to grow and progress, you will better understand how to handle every night and better live every day. Don't be afraid to face the facts of life. It is not negative to understand that the winters always come. Don't clip the word impossible out of the dictionary. Don't say I don't want to hear the problem. I don't want to see the difficulty. Don't show me the weeds. Don't say anything negative. Only see the positive. That's foolish. There is a thin line between positive thinking and kidding yourself. And remember, there's also a thin line between faith and folly. Credit goes to our awesome patrons who make videos like this one possible. Consider joining them to support our work. You can also support us by subscribing to our channel and clicking the bell button to get notified when our new videos are released. And as always, thank you for watching. Hi, welcome back to Mind Control. When you see someone who's the best in the world at what they do, they're being rewarded in public for what they've practiced millions of times in, in private. George Bernard Shaw said there are two kinds of people in life. You know, he said those that make things happen, those that watch things happen, and those that don't know what happened. See, a lot of people want to exempt themselves from taking responsibility. All they want to do is talk about the problem. Every time you see them, they'll tell you their story over and over and over and over again. You want to take responsibility for your life. I got me here, I can get me out of this. And I'm getting out. I'm not going to be a volunteer victim. Take full responsibility for your life. Accept where you are and the responsibility that you're going to take yourself where you want to go. Most of you won't be successful because when you're studying and you get tired, you quit. And I'm here to tell you today, if you got somebody came to my office the other day crying, I said, look, don't cry to give up, cry to keep going. Don't cry to quit. You're already in pain, you're already hurt, get a reward from it. Don't go to sleep until you succeed. Listen to me. I'm here to tell you today that you can come here, you can jump up, you can do flips, you can be excited when we give away money. 
But listen to me, you will never be successful until I don't have to give you a dime to do what you do. So part of beginning to get unstuck, you've got to decide that the behavior pattern that you have adopted doesn't work for you. You've got to change your strategy. And changing your strategy means reinventing your life, recreating you. And you have the power to do that. You can decide that you're going to change, that you're not going to be a wimp. You can decide that you're going to stand up to life. You can decide that I'm going to live each day as if it were my last. You have the power to make that decision. You can decide, I'm going to work on myself and develop myself. I'm going to empower me. And all of these things that are happening to me right now, they're just temporary inconveniences. They're not stronger than I am. I'm in charge here. You have to tap into suffering every day of your life because we have so much scarring that we have to clean up. You have to look at suffering as almost like I look at failure. To succeed, you must fail. In failure and in suffering, all the answers are in there. No matter what you face, no matter how bad it is going to be, when there is a challenge, and by a challenge I mean anything in life, any challenge, anything that you're facing, the only way to overcome the challenges that you face is to start walking. Take that step every day, no matter what you are facing, get up and start walking. And now is the time to take risk. You don't have kids. As you get older, your obligations increase. So, you, the, and once you have a family, you start taking risks, not just for yourself, but for your family as well. It gets much harder to uh, do things that might not work out. Um, so now is the time t to do that uh, before, you, before you have those obligations. So I would, I would encourage you to take risks now, do something bold. I dare you to realize that maybe you just don't have it so bad after all. Maybe it's time for you to realize and recognize that your troubles are not that bad. Maybe it's time that you realize that you need to get away from the drama that's in your life. Maybe it's time for you to stop chasing misery and start chasing your dreams. Reconnect with yourself. Because this is not the time for you to be wasting putting yourself back instead of pushing yourself forward. Ladies and gentlemen, you have so much, so much to offer, so much to give, so much to do, but doing it and sitting around waiting for it to happen, it's just going to stay in neutral. You have to electrify the desire that you have, that you once had. So the next time you feel like complaining, you feel like worrying, and you're so concerned about other things that doesn't necessarily concern you, ask yourself, is it making you better? Is it taking you higher? Are you going further or are you just being complacent? Complacent and complaining and worrying and doing things that are not better for you. Are you going to realize that maybe just going up that mountain does take a little bit more work than just having something handed to you? Are you going to be that person that realizes that if and when you get to the top of the mountain, it don't just stop there. You got to figure out another way to go even higher. You have to electrify and get all the things that are necessary within you to start doing the things that you need to do. So when the time comes, you can kick down that door and move towards the possibilities of being the best of who you really are. One of the central principles of my life is that no one knows enough to be a pessimist about anything. And that each and every one of us, when we close our mind to what is possible for us or what is possible for humanity,
closes off the genius that resides and lives in each and every one of us. Having an open mind doesn't necessarily mean finding fault with all of the things that you've been taught by others. It means opening yourself up to the potentiality and the possibility that anything and everything is possible. So having a mind that is open to everything and attached to nothing really means finding within ourselves the ability to get rid of a trait that I find so common in contemporary, in the contemporary world. Do you know that most people that I meet spend their lives looking for occasions to be offended? They actually are at, out there hoping that they can find some reason to be offended. And there's no shortage of reasons. They're out there everywhere. The way this person dressed, the, what this person said, they turn on their TV, they hear the news, they're offended by this. Someone didn't, uh, someone used language that they didn't like. Someone doesn't share the same customs that you. And people all day long, in fact, if you keep track tomorrow, you will find uh, probably a hundred reasons that you can go around being offended. But a mind that is open to everything and attached to nothing is a mind that says, I'm never looking for anything to be offended. And that whatever anybody else out there has to say, my response to that is, that's an interesting point of view. I've never considered that before. Talking about past and future and excessive emphasis on past and future in your life, yes, of course you need to have, it, there's nothing wrong with having a certain intention of what you want to achieve, take steps towards it. It's, it's part of living here in this dimension. You can't just say, I'm never going to plan anything anymore. Just take life as it comes. Well, some people try to do that, but they're not that happy either after a while. <laughs> uh, so then your life will get very diffused. And so to have an intention, to, have, to make a plan, perfectly fine. What you, either a short-term plan, like I'm going to meet you tomorrow at four o'clock. How would you ever meet anybody if we didn't have time? And, and future on a practical level, of course it's needed. The question is whether future takes over your mind. Being able to use it for practical purposes is of course great, but I call it clock time is fine, but psychological time is when the future takes over your mind and your entire thought patterns are geared only towards future and you treat the present moment as either just a means to an end because it enables you to get to the next one. You're always reaching out, so to speak, internally to the next, yet never quite here, always looking for some fulfillment there. So you can never embrace the fullness of now or you make the now into even an enemy some people are always unhappy. You, perhaps we all know some, one or two people like that. Three. <laughs> we, who are, wherever they are, they are they're complaining. It's never quite right. Wherever they are or whoever they are with, after a little while, they're very uncomfortable again. It should be somewhere else. You know the bumper sticker that you see in some cars in you know, various versions of it. It says, I'd rather be golfing. And then another one says, I'd rather be fishing, I'd rather be this, I'd rather be there. When I visited the, the spiritual teacher Ram Das, who lives in Hawaii, uh, he has a bumper sticker on it. Oh, Ram Das was the person who in the 70s wrote the book Be Here Now. That, and anyway, he has a bumper sticker on his car that says, I'd rather be here now. Remember the time when you wanted more. Remember the time when there were people in your life that did not believe in you. Remember the time when you honestly gave up on the possibilities of the uniqueness that you had inside. Remember there was a time that you complained so much, but yet did so little. There comes to a point in your life that you must recognize that there's a little bit more that has to be done than just complaining about it. You have to realize that you don't have 
any other opportunities waiting for you if you're not willing to work for the first opportunity that's been given to you. You don't have a lot of time left. So there's no reason to complain. You're not even in a position to complain. You have to figure out that there has to be another idea about you. And you have to understand that there has to be something even greater and more challenging waiting for you. And if you're not willing to step outside of your comfort zone, if you're not willing to understand the principles and the possibilities that you have within yourself, then everything that you are thriving for, everything that you are hungry for, will soon come to an end. Now, I'm not here to preach to you about this. I'm here to let you know that there are things that are going on around you right now that are far greater than your complaining. You complaining about so much, but yet you show no action. If you could trade places with someone right now, and the person that you are trading places with may have it just a little bit tougher than you have it going on in your life right now. So many people are suffering from so many things in this world at this moment, but yet you're complaining. So many people in this world right now wish they could trade places with you, but yet you're still complaining. You don't have that right to just give up. You don't have that right to just throw in the towel and say that it's over for you. Ladies and gentlemen, you got to understand that the reason that you are existing in this world right now is because you have things that must be done and only certain people are qualified to take it to the level that it needs to be taken to. For there should never be a limitation to wherever it is that you are seeking and how far you are willing to travel and how far you are willing to go. Sometimes people tend to get a little lazy. Sometimes people like to put themselves in this little bitty box and just say that they are okay with where they are. There can never just be an okay to anything when it comes to that life. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments section. Please also like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends and families. Please watch our other motivational videos. Thank you again.